And I've been discussing the CNA and the nurses and your desire to write the, the membership of the CNA a, a letter here. What are your thoughts uh, about the union simply saying no to your offer? Well, you know, I am trying to reach out to um, people across California in all different businesses and industries, and the nurses are someone who I think would actually respond very well to my message around jobs and a great education for our children. So I want to be able to communicate with them because I think they're only hearing one side of the story from the CNA. So we're going we're gonna to do everything we can. They said no to giving us their list, so we're going to do everything we can to make sure the nurses know where I stand on these issues and give me a fair hearing. They may decide that, uh, you know, they're gonna, still going to go the other way, but I really want them to hear my point of view. You know, I had their chief negotiator on the show. Her name is Beth Keene. Here's what she had to say about their concern with you, Meg Whitman. Here it is, about 10 seconds long. Meg has already said that she, has, uh, she is going to oppose regu- over-regulations in, in the state. This has been one of the keystone regulations in the hospital. Yeah, but, right, Meg, so three times she said, well, you know, Meg Whitman's going to oppose regulations, and she would stick the word over-regulations in there. Now, that's a, that's a macro topic. So, Meg, can you clarify as to wh- what you represent when you're talking about regulations? Well, I want to streamline regulations in California. Um, my view is we have regulation piled on regulation piled on regulation, and everyone I talk to thinks we are being strangled by regulation. So I think we need to have smart, effective regulation, but let's not you know, strangle businesses of all sizes by trying to regulate them into the ground. So um, you know, I think I've got a very balanced approach to, to smart regulation that uh, you know, solidifies the appropriate role of government doesn't have the government overreach into every bit of our, you know, part of our lives. Yeah, I have said that uh, I think the union's concerned about a relationship with you that you have with your husband, who happens to be a doctor, that um, there there might be some real good common sense in a uh, a penned letter by Meg Whitman to the nurses as it relates to what type of regulation for nurses is appropriate and beneficial and which is egregious and burdensome. Uh, have you had any conversation with your husband, and, and would that be included in a letter to the nurses? Well, I think I want nurses to know that my husband is a physician, because no one um, appreciate, appreciates nurses more than physicians. You know, you, if you talk to my husband, he would tell you he could not do his job without the nurses. So he is a, an enormous supporter of, of great nurses and knows he couldn't do his job without them. But he's not involved in the policy aspect of this, um, as you might imagine. And, uh, you know, as I said, I just want to be smart about how we regulate hospitals and businesses. And, um, you know, let's just be smart about this. We can have common sense regulations without, you know, driving businesses and and other entities out of California. So that's what I'm trying to accomplish. Hmm. Yeah, it's just amazing for me they're going to spend all this money to chase you around with a sophomoric drama. Uh, wherever where you go, and then you can't even write a letter to them. So I'm scratching well, my head over you know, this. I think um, one of the things that the nurses need to know is how much money their the CNA is spending of their union dues on political activities and how they're conducting themselves. And then they can make a decision. Is that something that they want their profession to be behind? So that's the other thing I'd, I'd like to bring up to them. Once again, we're talking with Meg Whitman here on 1380 KTKZ. The other big issue of last week was your opponent, Jerry Brown, uh, referencing a... Um, well, a character of the uh, the Nazi regime, he told radio station KGO in San Francisco that he kind of regrets you this. You know, I make mention of propaganda, and I referenced that fellow from Germany, which I probably shouldn't have. But this was just a, a private conversation. Nobody had a pencil. Nobody said, by the way, is this a statement that you're making to the public? Meg, what's your comment on, on Jerry Brown's comment that you are Nazi-like in your campaign style? Well, it's... Um, I think bizarre and somewhat disturbing, and um, it's it's sort of remarkable to me, really. And um, you know, with regard to the fact that he you know didn't know he was on the record, Jerry Brown has been in politics for 40 years. Jerry Brown knows exactly how this game works. So I think that is um, you know a belated excuse for an inappropriate comment. Has he called you to apologize? Has his campaign reached your campaign to to say that's not what we meant and please forgive anything like that? No. <laughs> <laughs> do you expect it to happen? Mm, that would be surprising to me. It would be a nice thing to do, but I, I don't think we're going to be hearing from the Brown campaign on this issue. Meg, you're campaigning for governor. Is there ever a moment in your mind when you're talking to anybody, anybody in this state, that you're not on record? No. <laughs> you are on record all the time um, because this is politics, and uh, it's a very high-profile race, and so 
you have to be, you know, you have to be aware of, of who you're talking to um, all the time. And that's, you know, I think that's appropriate. Listen, we are running to be public figures to represent the citizens of California, to represent the state of California. So I think um, that uh, thoughtfulness and discipline is an important element of, of what's going to be required um, if either one of us is governor.